so we have our extractor and before we get to extracting the first thing i want to do um, is get our bees out of this top box the one that we want to extract from this one should be ready i'll take a look at this one i don't think it's ready yet so we're just going to try extracting from this top box and the first thing i want to do is try to get those bees out of there and i have a device to try to help with that called a bee escape and what a bee escape does is allows me to place this frame like this or not this frame but this board in between or underneath the um, honey super that i want to extract and what will happen is bees inside the honey super will crawl out of this hole onto this side and um, they are only able to crawl out these long uh, these these pathways and for um, some reason they don't know how to get back in that way um, so that effectively makes it so that there will be less or no bees in that super when i'm ready to extract it so i don't have to go shaking them out, shaking them out or um, uh, brushing them off or anything of that nature um, and this is something i only do um, again i got the extractor today i'm not going to extract today i'm probably going to do like unboxing video of that separately um, but I'm gonna leave this on for at least a day, if not two days. That should get all the bees out of there um, and ready for extraction. So I'm gonna suit up and place this bee escape board in place um, and take a quick look in there while I'm at it and go from there. All right, so we have our bee escape board. I'm gonna go ahead and pop this open and pull off that top super put our bee escape board in the correct orientation and wrap it up. Should be a quick one here. And just so we can see, there's currently a fair number of bees inside these honey supers. So I have to remind myself which one is the the, um, I'm gonna have to, I have to figure out, I can't remember if it was the top one or the bottom one, which is the one that's more full. I think it's a top one. I'm gonna take a look and make sure it's still full and ready for extracting before we go ahead and install that board. So let me just pull a couple of frames out, take a look, go from there. Here is a second frame. It is fully capped. This is our frame ready to be extracted amongst about nine others. This outside frame, the inside is capped, but that side is not. So what I'll likely do is just extract from eight of my 10 frames inside this um, honey super. And I do see some uh, hive beetles. There's actually three hive beetles in this super. So we'll have to be careful about um, leaving my queen excluder on for too long because these hive beetles will not have any um, bees to try to kick them out and so we'll have to be maybe I'll go on the shorter side and only wait about a day before I go pulling this super off um, we'll see all right so what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and put this um, bee escape board right on top of that and again that's gonna draw any bees that are in that super that's off down into the rest of the um, um, hive and I'll also block off the top so they can only come in through that bottom entrance and can't get in through the honey super. So it may slow down my honey production in the other super, but um, again, we'll extract probably tomorrow or the day after. Um, so it won't be too much of a um, slowdown. So again, this side goes towards I want the side that I want them to escape to. So I want them to come out of this top box and into um, the bottom ones. All right, so I did take the ventilation off. I mean, it is kind of warm. I think they're going to be okay for a day. I and mean, it is a pretty warm day, but I think we'll be all right. It is later in the day. Um, like I said, I'm not going to keep this on there for too long. Maybe check by midday tomorrow, see how they're doing. So that's it. I'm going to, while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and feed the other hive, but that's pretty much all we need to do for today. And then uh, we can hopefully fast forward um, a couple of days and start the extracting process. We'll see. 
So it's been about 24 hours, maybe a little bit longer. We're gonna go ahead and take this super off and see um, if all the bees has mo have moved down into the um, rest of the hive and bring in for an extraction. Uh, while I'm out here, I'm gonna do a couple other things to keep things in order, but um, we'll have a super off pretty soon. All right, so looking inside, uh, there's not very many bees in that super. I'm gonna take off this um, bee escape and you should probably see a whole bunch of bees right underneath it. So we'll go ahead and take that off now. I'm gonna do some other stuff in the bottom box, but let's take a look and see. So as prescribed, there's really no bees on um, the top box. They've all escaped into the bottom. I'll go ahead and leave this off to the side because um, I won't put, be putting it back into the hive um, after this activity. Okay, so we've got our super inside. Got the frames here. There's about eight of them that we're going to extract. We have our extractor. We have a bucket that we're going to put the uh, cappings in. Um, and then we have the bucket down below for straining the honey. And um, we'll be able to bottle out of that bucket when we fill that up. I have two tools to uncap. I did just try this out as a trial run. I have a cold, cold knife and just an uncapping fork. Um, from what I've just learned is some of my frames are kind of sh um, shallow, so it's kind of hard for the knife to, to get in there. So the fork um, moves more slowly, but um, does a better job of getting the, um, the wax off. And then we can spin the frames. So I'm going a little bit out of order since we already have couple of frames in there. We'll go ahead and spin those out and those should start pouring out of this. So this might be a little bit difficult to do with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and set you up here. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and cover this just to be perfectly sanitary and just to keep any honey particles from coming out. Let's start giving it a spin. And there we go. Get our first bits of honey. It's gonna take me a little bit to draw those out. You can see here, there's our very first honey flow going through our strainer into our bucket down there. All right, just got finished spinning up this frame. Um, I weighed it before and it was about four pounds, spun it out and now it's about a pound and a half. So we got about uh, two and a half pounds of honey out of this one frame. Uh, <clears throat> if we get the same out of the rest of the eight frames, we stand to get about, you know, 16 to 18 pounds of honey out of this super, which I guess is pretty good. Um, so let's actually go through the steps of how I uncap these frames next and go from there. So here we have a capped frame and I'm just going to try to, um, show you how I uncap them. And again, I don't really have a good setup for this yet. So there's two ways I can do it. So I can use this knife and sort of saw off these cappings, which is easier said than done. Um, also because my frame is barely drawn out trying to drag this knife 
along that is pretty difficult. But again, I don't have the right setup to hold this thing, so it's gonna be kind of difficult. So let me try to work from the bottom up and see if I get better luck that way. Okay, and it's coming. Let me get all those cappings off. And the honey is exposed. These cappings will run through the strainer after we do the rest of the honey. Okay, any residual stuff. So let's see if we can do this again. Get it in frame. So once you kind of get started, it's a little bit easier. This is working out pretty good so far. Sometimes it takes off more than it needs. But that's okay. fork I try to get the edges that I can't get with the knife just kind of get up there and I give it outward force so when I'm digging into the comb try to keep it nice and flat and get this last stuff right here go and check for any other spots that's pretty good uncapping again I'm kind of doing this freehand I can get a better system for this after but we're only doing one one super so not too bad so I'm gonna repeat on this side this side doesn't look to be as as far um, protruding from the edge so the knife probably gonna be a pain so I'm just gonna go ahead and finish this one up using the uncapping fork. All right, I'd say that looks pretty good. Pop that in the extractor. Top side facing out. All right. We still have honey pouring out from the um, from the last couple of frames. There's honey down in there. If you can see it, I'll take a close up later. Go ahead, go ahead and repeat with the next frame, spin that out, and that's it. Okay, so the moment of truth. We have beautiful honey, straight from the hive, as fresh as can be. We can focus. Focus. There it is. It's pretty amazing. Totally worth it. All right, just a quick status update, um, and mostly from my own knowledge. I'm on frames five and six in the extractor. Four frames have been extracted thus far. I'm averaging about two and a half pounds per frame. Um, we'll go ahead and weigh the whole thing when we get done here. Um, just like with anything, sort of uh, a little bit of practice helps a lot. I'm, Uncapping the frames is getting a little bit easier every time I do it. Uh, I sort of found a method that kind of works with uh, the direction that I hold the frame and that sort of thing. So that's good. 
because that would take a really long time if that um, if I couldn't quite figure that out but that seems to be working out well and I'm just gonna go ahead and continue each frame I, I only have to spin this for maybe a few minutes before it's pretty uh, well emptied I know some people have spun their frames for minutes or even longer um, maybe if they have more frames in there but with just two frames i'm able to spin this pretty quickly so it's not super time time consuming but it, it does take a lot of time if we had multiple um supers i would definitely think about you know upgrading upgrading this extractor or something with um with more uh with a bigger basket inside and definitely the motor i can see the the motor coming in handy where you could um essentially be spinning a couple of frames while you're uncapping others whereas now i have to kind of do two at a time. I uncap one and two, stick them in the extractor, spin them out, and do the next. So if I had more than just eight frames, this could take a while. So um, a lot of work, but I think it's worth the effort. So um, thanks for watching, and we'll continue on and get a um, sort of a tally after it's kind of done uh, spilling out. It takes a while. It might take a couple hours for it to all kind of drain out of that tank. So I might be doing my tally in the morning at this point. So we'll see. All right, and um, one last point I should make is um, one thing you should do as a beekeeper is to um, check the moisture content of your honey. Um, higher than 20% is no good, ideally less than 17.8% from what I've read. Um, I just took a sample of the stuff that I've pulled. I don't expect the moisture content to be high because all of this is capped. Um, literally every single um, cell is capped. Sometimes you might pull a frame and it's got like 90% capped. The ones that I'm extracting today are 100% capped, so the moisture content should be good. This is a brand new device that I just picked up called a refractometer. Um, it's going to check the moisture content of the honey. And um, looking through it, um, I'm not certain if this is completely calibrated correctly. I'm going to double check it a couple of different uh, times. I did calibrate it with some olive oil before as they sort of um, recommended. Uh, right now it says the moisture content is about 15%. So I think we're in, I think that's pretty good. If anything, when it came from the factory, it was one or two points in the up in the uh, higher direction. So I think by, and I calibrated it back about two points. So if for some reason I did that wrong, uh, we're right at 17%. Otherwise, if it is calibrated uh, correctly with the oil that I used before, we're at 15%. So I think that's good, but I'm um, again, I'm new, so I don't know, um, and I'll maybe take a couple of different samples, but like I said, right now, looks like it's somewhere around 15% water content, so we're pretty good. Good to go. Honey should be good. Oh, and so, um, why you want your moisture content to be that low, or under 20%, is if there's too much moisture in your honey, you have a chance for it to ferment in a bad way. Um, there is fermenting that you can do to make honey mead, but in this case, you don't want to bottle honey that is too that has too high of a moisture content because it will ferment in the jar and um, go bad. So at this moisture content, I think we're golden. So um, I'll continue extracting the last two frames. We've got one more to uncap, and we've got, you know, we're just above the honey gate inside the bucket, so not a ton of honey coming out of this super, but um, enough to bottle up a couple of jars for, um, for ourselves um, and maybe a few for friends and family at most. Um, that's probably all we'll get this, this year um, for spring honey. This is the light stuff. And then um, we will maybe get, uh, maybe I get one more super that um, out of that same strong hive and then maybe some fall honey. But um, we're kind of just getting kind of a bonus here. I really didn't even expect to get any honey the first year. Obviously what happened to the weaker hive, that's not gonna produce um, any honey likely this year. That very well could have happened to both hives and I'd have, I'd have no honey. Um, so this is kind of, kind of cool that I was able to actually do this the first year. Kind of get situated with some new equipment, kind of get my feet wet with um, how this all works, kind of figure it out and improve. Uh, by no means is this an efficient process just yet, but I'll figure it out, so. All right, that's it. I'll continue up and then we'll get a tally. All right, so just a final update for tonight. Um, got the last frame. Our last two frames have uh, been spun. There's just a little bit left in the tank. I'm just gonna let that drizzle out for the next hour or so. Um, 
And then I do have a little, not a little, but quite a bit of cappings. You can see those here. And there's a little bit of honey mixed in between there. So what I'm gonna try to do is, um, when this kind of stops going, I'll dump that onto the strainer and let that settle out. We look in the bucket. We can see, it's kind of hard to tell because that strainer's in the way, but we are, we have this about this much honey. So um, obviously not quite halfway, maybe a little bit less than that. So maybe we have a gallon or two of honey. So uh, plus whatever else is still pouring out of there. Um, and there's a little bit more in the bottom strainer that takes a little bit longer to filter out. And that's it. So tomorrow morning, I'll probably have a better idea of how much honey we pulled out of there. I'll weigh this out. And then um, they recommend sort of letting that um, settle even further. All the bubbles will rise to the top so you get nice clear honey. And then when you um, bottle out of this at the bottom, your, your glasses of honey will be nice and clear, which doesn't really matter. It just looks nicer and it's more presentable. So we will then um, bottle into these little half pound jars and one pound jars. We have had a few days to let this settle out, but the first things first um, in this bucket is the um, honey that came out of our extractor, which I have stored here now. I've kind of cleaned it out. This is really all of my uh, beekeeping stuff that I have still on this table. Uh, but in this bucket, we were able to um, collect 21 pounds of honey. And so I'll use this bucket. Now uh, the buck below has all the wax cappings, which I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with yet, but I sort of just put them in that bucket, seal them off. Um, so they're nice and fresh for when I do figure out what I need to do. I have a whole bunch of jars. These are my uh, eight ounce jars, AKA half pound, um, and I have one pound jars that I can fill up. So these are little half pound jars, one pound jars. Uh, I have a scale here so I can kind of uh, make sure, but obviously I'll, these jars, uh, when you fill them, literally when you fill this, it, it'll be a pound of honey when it gets to, um, to essentially that neck. And then this one here is about a half pound, but I can just verify that with this little scale that I have set up here. Um, so why don't I go ahead and Sort of demo filling up a jar so I can see this jar is uh, 4.7 ounces so obviously I need to put in another half pound so another eight ounces of honey in there to give us a half pound and so I'll just kind of zoom in so we can see what that looks like coming out of the bucket all right so it's pretty simple I'm just gonna Put this here, just make sure nothing drips out, but this little wing nut kind of loosens it. And then we can get the honey flowing. And so there will be some bubbles in there, I'm guessing, but those will settle out. And I can even, maybe I can prop this up later, make it a little bit easier, but I can kind of lay it down. And it's out of frame, so I'll just leave it up here. But here's our honey. It's a nice golden yellow color. And I probably have to lean this towards, obviously this bucket's not very full. It's just above the honey gate. So eventually I have to tilt it to get most of the honey out. Probably do another extraction in a couple of weeks. But here we go. Just taking this slow. Obviously, I'll speed this up once I get get better at it. Open it up a little more. That's pretty good. I'll just take another jar and put it below for when this drips. Okay, swap that. So if I weigh that jar, remember it was. 4.7 ounces was the weight. Look at that, 12.7, so exactly eight ounces. Half pound of, um, 
of honey in that jar. And let's go ahead and take a closer look at it. All right, so we have our jar of honey in our little cap that has like a little ceiling tab underneath. And right now it has some bubbles in it. Let's try to get some light. But it's a nice golden color. Those bubbles will rise to the top. And that is half ounce, half, half pound jar of honey. I do have one that I, um, I put in the jar yesterday or the day before. And you can see all the bubbles are gone. It looks really nice. It won't really show up in the picture, but you can see it's nice and clear, but there are little granules of the, of the pollen that's stored in there. This is a raw, unfiltered honey. <clears throat> it went through, I forget the actual size, but obviously this is the larger filter that caught most of the wax and then this little small particle filter and uh, the little bits of pollen, the stuff that's good for your allergies, um, aren't filtered out like, like a store-bought honey. So um, this has really good health benefits um, for allergies and whatnot because it's all local pollen going into, um, into your honey and that's what kind of builds up your immune system, I guess, for any allergies you have. So I'm super excited, but these are my first jars. That's a half pound jar and I did also fill a one pound jar and it looks pretty nice. Um, it's kind of mesmerizing to see. Um, but yeah, those uh, bees did a lot of great work. Like I said I got about 21 pounds so I can fill, I'll probably fill some one pound jars and some half pound jars and um, distribute them. I'm hoping I do get a little bit more honey this year. Um, at least another Maybe another 20 pounds um, from the other super of which will be mostly the springtime honey. I'm hoping before the end of August I'll extract that other one. Although it's been super dry, uh, we've had like a drought. We haven't hardly had hard, had hardly any rain, um, which definitely reduces how much um, nectar is coming in. Um, it also makes the honey. I was actually talking with my mentor. It, I did measure my honey again for the moisture content, and it was still around 15 to 16 percent. And the reason why it's a, a lower side is because we are in a drought, so the the honey is a little bit drier. Um, but I was actually reading online, and they said in some cases that's like kind of like a um, it's it's a better it's a better honey in that in that case rather than a wetter honey. Um, so we'll see. I actually haven't measured. After I put in here, I did uh, measure when I was just getting out of the strainer. We'll see if that's changed, but I doubt it. Um, honey does pick up moisture if it's sitting, but in this case, it's sealed in this bucket, so it's not going to pick up any moisture. And obviously, as I'm bottling it, it's sealed and it's going to be it's going to be really good. So I'm going to bottle those up um, next. But um, I think that's pretty much it. Nothing else to chat about. So um, thanks again for watching. This has been. Um, been fun and exciting. Looking forward to bottling all this up and sharing it with you um, in the future. Thanks. Bye.